What's going on, Guardians? Uh, I'm going to be doing a new series where I make a brand new account, and I am going to be going through what you need to do if you are a new light player or a returning player. Um, I plan to pick Warlock for this, but pretty much everything is going to be the same for the Titan and Hunter as well. Um, so this is just, we were deciding to go with the Warlock. And then I will show you the completed uh, character once it is completely finished. So firstly, it's going to take us into the starting mission, the original story. Um, I am going to skip this because a lot of Guardians um, have already done this. And this is more of a new player guide than anything else. Um... I will have a little bit of the story in here, certain story points, stuff like that, but this is mainly uh, a guide for what to do after the conclusion of the original introductory quest. So um, without further ado, let's get into the gameplay. Also there will be a point where you are given your first legendary weapon. This is going to be a Nightwatch Scout Rifle. This is one of the best weapons in the game. Even once you get into higher tier content, this thing is actually really good. And there are a lot of people that still run it in high tier content, me included, on my main account. Um, so if you do get this weapon from the introductory quest, make sure you hold on to this as it's going to be very helpful later down the line. One thing I will say during the cold boot mission is going to be make sure you stay clear of the guns on these hive tomb ships as they do quite a bit of damage to you if you're not careful. There's also going to be what's called Mav Stash back in the, uh, the little shed back here behind Shaw. And this is going to give you the Tractor Cannon Exotic, which is actually something I still have people run uh, inside of raids. So this is going to be a very good weapon to get right off the bat. Today I found the homage to Randall the Vandal, in which uh, I found the Vandal that you can't kill, which is always fun, especially when you're a uh, new light looking for the key, quote unquote, in the, uh, the Cosmodrome, which is also very elusive apparently. Another thing I want to point out in the Vendetta quest is the fact that they never tell you where the key is, you just kind of have to find it, and it is actually up on this ledge up here. Um, it's going to give you a piece of legendary okay. armor, residual particles consistent with cash alloys. and uh, let's just say it is stupidly hard to find. I followed guardians around that were level 1. That, and, and spent at least 20 minutes trying to find this stupid chest as a player who has over 6,000 hours in the game. Uh, a new light wouldn't be able to find this all the way up here without some sort of quest marker or something to that effect. Uh, so that's just something Bungie probably should update in the future. During your jump ship. Also, I absolutely love this Amanda Holiday character. What you looking for? She seems like such an interesting character that I'd love to get to know and talk to. Yeah. After the completion of the initial New Light quest, you will get a few different quests. You will get the different. Well, you will get the quests to unlock the different subclasses. Um, I would definitely, if you're on Warlock or really any of them, recommend getting the Solar subclass before you do anything else. Um, you will also be given the First Contact Lightfall mission, which if you do not do that immediately after um, doing your first initial quest, it will launch you into that uh, eventually. Upon completing the first Lightfall mission, you will get Legacy Awoken Queensguard. This is going to give you access to the battle, the Defiant Battlegrounds. Um, though, if you do not have the Seasons Pass, this is not a priority. You will also get the Spark or a Spark of Hope. This is going to give you the Risk Runner and access to the EDZ. I would recommend doing this before completing your Arc um, subclass, as this is going to make this uh, quest step a lot easier. But I would recommend getting Solar right, right off the bat. 
after you talk to Devrim K for a spark of hope, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to either defeat Fallen or looting Lost Sector chests, which the Atrium is actually a Lost Sector that is going to be right below Devrim K right here and is going to be probably the easiest one you can do. After completing the Lost Sector quest step, you will once again have to return to Devrim K. Then it is going to launch you into the Risk Reward mission, which is going to take you back to the Cosmodrome, though it's for some reason launched in the EDZ. Um, he is also going to give you a nice little uh, shotgun that you can use inside of this mission, um, as well as some extra loot. So you want to launch this up, and this is going to give you the Risk Runner Exotic SMG. For the defeat Dust Captain's part of this mission, what you're going to want to do is kill the enemies around the sheds, the Dust Walker Techs, and then after you kill so many of these guys, a Yellow Bar Captain is going to spawn inside the shed, and you want to kill that Captain. So I know right here that I probably need to kill a couple more enemies for this captain to spawn and you can use your shotgun to kill him very easily. After killing all three captains, this is going to allow you to progress back to where you were first revived. And a lot of these enemies in this area definitely don't have to be killed. You can just kind of run past them and get to the objective marker. As you progress, you will actually find a big huge chasm in here, which the game will warn you about. Um, but essentially all you have to do is traverse your way across this chasm. There are little platforms you can jump on to make your life a lot easier. Um, and as you progress through here, the jumps will get harder and harder to hit. But luckily, if you do die here, you can respawn very, very easily. After a while, you will unlock the Risk Runner SMG. And after this, all the mission does is allow you to test this thing out and get up to some mischief. Um, the easiest way to use this is going to be actually letting one of these enemies hit you with some arc uh, attacks as this will make you pretty much immune to all of the enemies in here and is going to give you Arc Conductor massively allow or allowing you to do some massive ad clear potential. Completing this mission will allow you to get the Risk Runner Catalyst which will make this weapon 10 times better um, and you have to level this up, it'll give it extra range and it will increase the time that your Superconductor perk is active. To finish off the Spark of Hope quest, you will have to return to Commander Zavala, and he will give you a special emblem that is a different version of the original emblem that you get as, so like, as a warlock. The original emblem is golden. This one has, like, a little design in the background. And this is what you will get for completing the Spark of Hope quest. Now, hopefully by the time that you return to the tower, you will have the Stoking the Flame quest completed and you can go talk to Ikora Ray. Once you do return to Ikora Ray, she is going to give you your new subclass, as well as the ability to purchase more upgrades for this subclass. If you're on Warlock and you unlock Solar, I would recommend the first thing you purchase being the Well of Radiance, as this is going to be your best friend. Um, after that, it is simply going to be unlocking all of your abilities, grenades, uh, movement abilities, aspects, and fragments. Um, the first thing for the class abilities that I'd recommend you pick up is Phoenix Dive, and then you automatically get the best melee as well as the best movement option and one of the best grenades. Um, then I would recommend you pick up some aspects, Icarus Dash and Heat Rises. 
And then here comes the expensive part, and that's going to be picking up every single one of these fragments. There are ones that are better than others that I will touch on later once I have enough glimmer to purchase them. Um, but eventually you will want to pick up all of these fragments. My next recommendations would be completing the learning the light quest as well as the riding the storm quest. These are going to give you more access to some of your abilities. After this, I would recommend going for your guardian rank leveling up. Um, so that's going, you want to get to at least level four. Um, and then you will probably want to get to level five, levels five and six, as this is going to unlock most of the game. Um, these are pretty self explanatory, and Bungie does do a pretty good job of teaching you and showing you what you need to do, um, such as completing public events in the EDZ or exploring Nessus and doing patrols and lost sectors on Nessus. Um, but yes, these are going to be the next things that you want to do. Um, and then after I complete these, I will come back and show you guys what you want to do after you are roughly Guardian rank 4. On a quick side note, one of the first things I would recommend that you do to your ghost shell is going to be leveling it up to level 6 and then unlocking the blinding light ghost mod as this is going to increase your XP gains by 12% which is going to help you in the long run. On another quick little side note, after you've completed all three of the light subclass quests, Ikora Ray is going to give you a quest to unlock the div- or well, one quest per subclass to use that subclass um, to its fullest, you and it will allow you to unlock you exotics to that are specifically associated with those subclasses and will help you in your journey. After completing Guardian Rank 3, there's going to be a point where you must purchase at least three of the soul or three of the fragments. The fragments I would recommend you purchase are going to be for the solar subclass. I would recommend that you purchase firstly um, the Ember of Char. This is going to be one, and then the Ember of Resolve. After you purchase these, it's going to upgrade your Guardian Rank objective, and you will be able to progress to Guardian Rank 4. After you complete Guardian Rank 4 for Guardian Rank 5, Bungie is going to recommend that you do Vanguard Ops Playlist, which is actually a very good idea. Since Bungie is recommending that you do the Vanguard Ops Playlist, now is going to be a good time to let you know that there are certain objectives that you can complete inside of Crucible, Vanguard, and Gambit that are going to give you exotic engrams. These are going to be very helpful in getting you all of the exotics inside of Destiny 2, as there are quite a few, especially now, um, after Lightfall. And a lot of these drop from random exotic uh, engrams, or can be picked up from Xur, uh, wherever he is for that week, um, which I will always have the Xur video on my channel so that you all can find him and get some of the exotics that he's selling, um, whether those be weapons or armor. Also, at the end of your first Vanguard Ops, make sure you commend the other players, let them know how much of a help they were, because that will also give you one of your Guardian Rank objectives. Speaking of Vanguard Ops, now is probably going to be a good time to tell you about the vendors. Now, the vendors now have what is called focus decoding. Essentially, when you rank up your vendor, and you do this by doing whatever activity, so Zavala will rank up through Vanguard Ops and Nightfall Strikes, whereas Shax will rank up through Crucible Games, um, they will start to give you uh, engrams, as well as powerful gear, enhancement cores, all kinds of other stuff. But what you can do with these is if you've gotten a weapon before, you can focus it into that specific weapon. And if you've never gotten a weapon before and it was one that's already gone away, 
what you can do is you can take a lot of engrams and focus them into one of these. I would recommend going for the Hothead as this is a really good rocket launcher, but there are a lot of good weapons in here. After completing your first Vanguard's Ops, I would recommend going into Dares of Eternity as this is going to be a great source of legendary gear and a great source of some very, very good weapons like the Eager's Edge Swords that I run very often on my uh, personal account and my main account. Upon completing your first Dares of Eternity, go to Zur's Treasure Hoard as he is going to have some loot for you and you can use that key that you just got in the chest. Once you've completed Guardian Rank 5, what it's going to allow you to do is put mods on your armor. So what mods do you probably want? Well, the first thing you are probably going to want is going to be upgrading your resilience. Right now your stats are very, very bad. <laughs> And you probably would like to get these stats up, or at least your teammates will like you to, would will probably like you to get your stats up. So just make sure you are putting some um, some of these mods on your gear, as it will make it more powerful. And over time, once you get to a Guardian rank six, you will actually have access to all of these mods. So now that you've done your Dares of Eternity run and you've done your Vanguard Ops run, you're probably thinking, Aegon, what should I do next? Well, as you can see all around the tower, there are ways for you to get powerful gear. And it is somewhat explained, but not too heavily, that you have a power level. Mine is currently 1691. This is going to be a combination of of your gear score, so how powerful your gear is, and also how powerful your artifact is, so pretty much getting experience, is going to upgrade your artifact, and that's gonna give you extra power bonus. So, like I said, right now, my power level is 1691, and a lot of my gear is actually pretty high stats, and my boots are actually terrible. So, if I go here, and this is going to be a if I go back here, she is going to give me a powerful reward. Maybe. If this happens, just go to here, reload, and try again. Um, but a lot of these vendors will give you powerful gear, which will increase your power level. And then as you progress in power level, you will also start to notice that things like the Crucible and Vanguard Ops will also give you these powerful rewards. Um, some of these are locked behind a paywall, but some of these are also free, such as the Dares of Eternity one. If you complete three Dares of Eternity and your score is 25 or 250,000 or higher, you can get extra loot from that. Um, but other than that, there are the vendors that you can do, and then there will be, once you get to a certain power level, each of these is going to have their own respective um, rewards. So now that you've gotten to this point, your Guardian rank five, and you're roughly 1690 power level, you've done a Dares of Eternity, you've done a Vanguard Ops, what's the next step? Well, this is going to be where I end the video for now. I will have a part two um, once I have reached that level, but what you're going to do until then, or at least what I'm going to do, is keep running Vanguard Ops. This is going to give me these Vanguard Engrams so that I can get a hothead. And then the next thing that I'm going to be doing is running a lot of the Dares of Eternity until you get a specific sword. This is either going to be a purple or blue sword. Uh, the purple sword is called the Other Half and the blue sword is called Half Truths. You are looking for a very specific perk and that is going to be Eager's Edge. You are looking for the Eager's Edge perk. 
Um, and that is a very good perk. And in part two, I will show you why. Um, but until then, that's going to be it from me. Egg on out.